Europe's largest humanitarian crisis since 1945. He was forced to have sex with over a thousand men. It is, without any doubt, one of the most significant events uh, that the world has seen. Two men in clown costumes who were running away, one carrying a shotgun and the other a pipe. And that he was holding his mother's head in one hand and a butcher knife in the other hand. Exorcists for the Roman Catholic Church say that there is an alarming increase in demonic activity. This according to the exorcist for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. Father Vincent Lampert has been an exorcist for the Archdiocese since 2005. He's the pastor at St. Malachy's in Indianapolis. He said that although steps have been taken by the church to increase the number of exorcists, demand is uh, still outpacing supply. Last October, Father Lampert met in Rome with the International Association of Exorcists. It's a support group of 400 Catholic leaders and priests. According to him, group mem members agree that there is a growing need for more exorcists. Now, think what you will of Roman Catholic doctrine, and there are certainly problems with Roman Catholic doctrine, but at least they acknowledge we're in the middle of a supernatural war, something that most Christians in America fail to see. We begin with a story that has left a community in shock as a man is charged with murder after police say he decapitated his own mother. 18-year-old Oliver Funes Machada made his first court appearance today to face charges. And we do want to warn you, some of you may find the details of this story very disturbing. CBS North Carolina's Steve Sprasia is live at the Franklin County Detention Center with details. Steve. When the suspect made his first court appearance here this morning, the judge minced no words, saying due to the severity of the incident, he was going to be held on no bond. Now, Machada is currently charged with first-degree murder, which means he could face the death penalty if he's convicted. In court today, he was surrounded by 10 deputies. The teen had cuts on his hand, cuts the deputies say that he received when they alleged that he beheaded his 35-year-old mother. Investigators claim that after the murder, he then called 911. And the deputies say when they arrived on scene, they claimed that he was holding his mother's head in one hand and a butcher knife in the other hand. Investigators say there were two other children in the home at the time of the murders. They were unharmed. Those investigators say at this point they don't know what, if anything, those children may have witnessed. The melee over clowns has apparently spread into 2017. Police in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania, say they're investigating a report that two men dressed as clowns carrying weapons chased a group of kids who were playing in the woods. The father of one of the boys, Michael Makowski, said that he called police after his three kids came home terrified. Makowski says the kids then pointed out two men in clown costumes who were running away, one carrying a shotgun and the other a pipe. About an immigrant from Somalia charged with raping a woman in, po in Polk County created a firestorm of negative comments against immigrants on social media. Many people are wondering why he isn't being deported. This man, 22-year-old Mohammed Anale, is facing charges of first and third degree criminal sexual conduct. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson takes a closer look at how the government deals with immigrants who are charged with crimes. Last Friday night, Muhammad Anale allegedly raped a woman at Knife Point while riding a commercial bus through Polk County. Anale was arrested at a UMC bus stop in Crookston. However, police did not find a knife. Anale has been formally charged and released from jail after posting $5,000 bail. Anale told police that he had just moved to Minneapolis from Somalia just last September. However, ICE, the Immigration Customs Enforcement Agency, says they only have jurisdiction over immigrants after they've been admitted to the U.S. ICE released the following statement to Valley News Live. ICE has no legal interest in this individual at this time. I can't discuss an individual's immigration status. That's considered private information. But for the present, ICE has no involvement in this case. If he's convicted, that may change. In the meantime, we'll continue to monitor the case. In a phone interview, an ICE spokesperson told me that basically it works like this. If an immigrant is convicted of a crime, they may have the authority to deport that person. At this point, Anali is innocent until proven guilty. And even if he is found guilty, that doesn't necessarily mean he would be deported. 
For instance, we don't know Anali's immigration status, but it's possible he's already legally a U.S. citizen and would simply do his prison time here in the U.S. if he was convicted. A teenage human trafficking victim is suing a motel where her lawyer says she was forced to have sex with over a thousand men. The victim is a 17-year-old female, identified only as MB, who was allegedly forced into the sex trade at age 14. The suit is seeking over $50,000 in damages from the Roosevelt Inn in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. CBS reports local prosecutors know the inn as an epicenter of human trafficking. A recent annual report published by the government of India has revealed a 25% hike in human uh, trafficking cases. Almost 20,000 women and children were victims of human trafficking in India just last year. However, critics say these numbers are only the tip of the iceberg and that many of these cases go unreported. Our correspondent Shana Butt reports from the Indian capital, New Delhi. Amitabai lives on a walkway of a busy road in Indian capital, New Delhi, with her husband and children. Lured by a promise of job, the entire family migrated to the capital but ended up begging. On this day in 2016, Amitabai's seven-year-old deaf and dumb daughter was stolen. Despite reporting the matter to the police, Amitha's daughter remains missing. We had huge debt back home and we wanted to get this burden off soon. But we never thought we would end up having this miserable life. My daughter has been stolen and so far there has been no action. Amitha says police hardly listen to poor. A recent report revealed by the government of India records a 25% rise in human trafficking related cases in 2016 compared to the previous year. Each year tens of thousands of people, mostly poor women and children, are lured into India's cities and towns by traffickers who promise good jobs but sell them into modern day slavery, making India one of the world's fastest growing regions for human trafficking. Throughout Tampa Bay, manatees are washing up dead, but scientists want to know why. They have their suspicions, but for now, it's a big mystery. News Channel 8's John Rogers joins us now live from Apollo Beach to tell us about this strange phenomenon. John? Jen, it's strange and sad. Just over the past couple of weeks, more than a dozen manatees have been found washed up across Tampa Bay. And this is an endangered species, mind you. So scientists want to find this root cause quickly. Dave Plank brought his family down here from Michigan to see a site unique to the Sunshine State, the beloved manatee. Their snouts are touching one another. They're very much like the dolphins. They communicate. But sadly, many are seeing a shocking trend. Manatees washing ashore. On Saturday, Charles Martin spotted this one clinging to life in Inglewood. Thankfully, it survived. If you don't know what's killing something, then you can't help control it, and you'll lose a species eventually. And between January 1st and March 5th, 11 manatees have been found dead throughout southwest Florida. Mothers in Somalia have to make an agonizing decision. Which child should they feed today? A drought has devastated crops and livestock and brought yet another famine to the Horn of Africa. I came two days ago from the neighboring district and the situation I was running from is the same as here. We didn't have food, our cows and goats died and we have nothing left now. The number of people affected in Somalia are staggering and the UN is calling on rich countries to do more to help. The crisis in Somalia is just one part of a wider problem. The UN says the world faces the largest humanitarian crisis since 1945. 18.8 million people in Yemen are in urgent need of food. They're joined by 7.5 million others in South Sudan, more than 6 million in neighboring Somalia, and 7 million in northeast Nigeria. And an estimated 18 million civilians are in need of humanitarian assistance. The UN says too the naval blockade imposed on Yemen has put the nation on the brink of famine. Protesters have gathered outside the Dutch embassy in response to the Dutch government's decision to bar the Turkish foreign minister from landing in the Netherlands. Demonstrators cheered and shouted slogans against the Netherlands over the increasingly divisive dispute while access to and from the Dutch embassy was closed off for security reasons. The Turkish foreign minister was scheduled to address a rally in support of a Turkish referendum next month, but the action was deemed a threat to public order by the Dutch prime minister. 
Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan issued a sharp rebuke, saying the Netherlands' behavior was reminiscent of Nazism. A row has exploded between Turkey and the Netherlands after the EU country banned rallies in support of the Turkish president, who is now drumming up support ahead of a constitutional referendum. In a response, Ankara compared Amsterdam's actions to those of the Nazis. Two Turkish ministers were effectively barred from entering the Netherlands, and in his latest speech, the Turkish president called the EU state, quote, a banana republic. Listen, Netherlands, you'll jump once, you'll jump twice, but my people will thwart your game. You can cancel our foreign minister flight as much as you want, but let's see how your flights come to Turkey now. They don't know diplomacy or politics. They're Nazi remnants. They're fascists. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutter has described Turkish sanctions as inappropriate. Well, he said the sanctions against his government were not too bad, but the Netherlands have more to be angry about. Ankara has suspended high-level diplomatic relations after Dutch authorities prevented its ministers from speaking at rallies of expatriate Turks, sparking a row between the NATO allies. But the EU has called on Turkey to refrain from excessive statements after President Recep Tayyip Erdogan accused the Netherlands of acting like Nazis. Germany has threatened to ban Turkish politicians from entering the country after relations between Berlin and Ankara reached a new diplomatic low. RT's Peter Oliver has details on this recent drama. Well, the very latest we've heard comes from Angela Merkel's chief of staff, Peter Altmaier. He said that at the moment, Germany wouldn't ban uh, Turkish uh, politicians coming here to campaign or ban Turkish politicians from coming here to Germany in general. But he said that it was an option that remained on the table and one that they were willing to use. Just because the German government hasn't used all of the means that international law puts at its disposal, that doesn't give the other countries a free pass. A travel ban would be the last resort, and we are keeping it in reserve. Well, this whole diplomatic impasse between European nations and Turkey is becoming somewhat farcical, and that's being represented from what we've heard from the, uh, at times, hard-nosed, the at times, t attack dog of Angela Merkel, the German finance minister, Wolfgang Schäuble. He's described the whole situation as enough to make you want to cry. Coming soon to a theatre in Iran. Battle of the Persian Gulf 2. The new animated film by an Iranian director depicts an epic battle between the United States and Iran. In one scene, an Iranian officer launches a missile at a U.S. Navy ship in the Persian Gulf. Seconds later, the vessel explodes into a huge ball of fire, sinking it. The film's director told Reuters, I hope that the film shows Trump how American soldiers will face a humiliating defeat if they attack Iran. The movie is another reminder of tensions that are brewing in the region. Iran has been conducting missile tests with the country's Revolutionary Guards, successfully testing a naval missile that can be used against targets some 100 miles away, targets that include U.S. ships. And another rogue country, North Korea, also continues to test the new administration in Washington. The communist regime carried out its fifth nuclear test and launched several missiles in recent days. The global community needs to understand every country is in danger from the actions of North Korea. Adding to the peninsula's political instability, South Korea, a strong U.S. ally and key trading partner, removed its president from power following corruption charges. Protests have erupted on the streets of Seoul as the country prepares to elect a new leader. People in Indian-controlled Kashmir staged yet another rally after Friday prayers to protest against violence in the Himalayan Valley. They also voiced their anger at the killing of two young protesters by Indian forces on Thursday. Mohammad Rizwan is part of an anti-India protest in Kashmir. He says Indian forces target protesters no matter how peaceful they are. We are left with no choice. We are in constant pain and there is no way out except to voice our concern during rallies. We want peace and peaceful solution. No bloodshed. Since the killing of a famous pro-independence leader, Burhan Vani, in July 2016, there has been a surge in violence across Kashmir. 
where ongoing clashes between Indian forces and protesters have left many dead. According to police sources, many young people have joined pro-independence outfits. Most 100,000 people have been displaced from the western part of the Iraqi city of Mosul. That's in the last 19 days, over which the fighting has intensified. The figures come from the UN Refugee Agency. We spoke to its spokesperson, Hala Jabba. She described to us the humanitarian catastrophe there. There's huge numbers of um, civilians being displaced on a daily basis. Most of them are coming out having walked for hours. They are exhausted. They are um, obviously dirty. They haven't had a chance to, 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 to bathe or shower or even have water. Kids are, are hungry, um, uh, bewildered, shocked, um, scared, um, but happy to be out. The influx or the, the exodus of, of the displaced um, is, is really increasing on a daily basis. largest humanitarian crisis since 1945. He was forced to have sex with over a thousand men. It is, without any doubt, one of the most significant events uh, that the world has seen. Two men in clown costumes who were running away, one carrying a shotgun and the other a pipe. And that he was holding. Group members agree that there is a growing need for more exorcists. Now, think what you will of Roman Catholic doctrine, and there are certainly problems with Roman Catholic doctrine, but at least they acknowledge we're in the middle of a supernatural war, something that most Christians in America fail to see. We begin with a story that has left a community in shock as a man is charged with murder after police say he decapitated his own mother. 18-year-old Oliver Funes Machada made his first court appearance today to face charges, and we do want to warn you, some of you may find the details of this story very disturbing. CBS North Carolina's Steve Sprasia is live at the Franklin County Detention Center with details. Steve. When the suspect made his first court appearance here this morning, the judge minced no word, saying due to the severity of the incident, he was going to be held on no bond. Now, Machada is currently charged with first-degree murder, which means he could face the death penalty if he's convicted. In court today, he was surrounded by 10 deputies. The teen had cuts on his hand, cuts the deputies say that he received when they alleged that he beheaded his 35-year-old mother. Investigators claim that after the murder, he then called 911. And the deputies say when they arrived on scene, they claimed that he was holding his mother's head in one hand and a butcher knife in the other hand. Investigators say there were two other children in the home at the time of the murders. They were unharmed. Those investigators say at this point they don't know what, if anything, those children may have witnessed. His mother's head in one hand and a butcher knife in the other hand. Exorcists for the Roman Catholic Church say that there is an alarming increase in demonic activity. This is according to the exorcist for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. Father Vincent Lampert has been an exorcist for the Archdiocese since 2005. He's the pastor at St. Malachy's in Indianapolis. He said that although steps have been taken by the church to increase the number of exorcists, demand is uh, still outpacing supply. Last October, Father Lampert met in Rome with the International Association of Exorcists. It's a support group of 400 Catholic leaders and priests. According to him, the melee over clowns has apparently spread into 2017. Police in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania, say they're investigating a report that two men dressed as clowns carrying weapons chased a group of kids who were playing in the woods. The father of one of the boys, Michael Mikowski, said that he called police after his three kids came home terrified. 
Makowski says the kids then pointed out two men in clown costumes who were running away, one carrying a shotgun and the other a pipe. About an immigrant from Somalia charged with raping a woman in, po in Polk County created a firestorm of negative comments against immigrants on social media. Many people are wondering why he isn't being deported. This man, 22-year-old Mohamed Anale, is facing charges of first and third degree criminal sexual conduct. Valley News Team